May God be lifted in your life and may you be lifted through and in God. Welcome to Be Lifted. Shout hallelujah. Raise up your right hand to the heavens and declare this louder than anyone around you. Say uncommon favor. Mysterious breakthroughs. Envelope my life. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and ask for those two things. name we pray. Say this again loud and clear. Ancestral blessings captured by the enemy. I release you by fire. In the name of Jesus. name we pray. Anywhere I go, darkness shall scatter. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare that one to Thank you, Jesus. Right there where you are. There are prayers we need to pray this morning. Serious prayers. Prayer for ourselves. Prayer for the nation. Everybody will shout this loud and clear. Panda of God. Arise. Waste my enemies. Can you shout that loud and clear? Your voice is not violent enough. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and decree it. Waste my enemies. Aha! Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. This next prayer, you need sufficient anger in your spirit to get results. There are people here this morning who are operating at their minimum capacity. Something needs to open up inside their spirit to make them go to the maximum. If you will pray that prayer with reckless abandon, with embarrassing violence, be surprised what will happen within the next few hours. Powers of the strong man. Can you shout this loud? Blocking my manifestation. Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Yes. My partner Powers of the strong man blocking my manifestation. Papalia the cassette in the Abushanda. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In 
Jesus name we pray. Silence. Silence. You that person over there, that your spirit man has been chained down by a shrine in your place of bath. As I can't seven from here, that chain shall break instantly. And your spirit man shall be released. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes, you have been chained down by a shrine in your place of birth. Doesn't matter what it is. You, that person from the Benin area, be released from that yoke. That's right. Shout this again loud and clear. Power of delayed blessings. Sisters, can I hear you shouting that? Sisters, your voice is not loud enough. Brothers, let me hear you shouting it. In the name of Jesus. That's right. But Peter Nikaya was shamed there about something. In Jesus' name we pray. Every power that wants me to labor in vain. The prayers of this morning, they are not ordinary prayers. It would be dangerous to keep quiet. If you are in this building, or you are listening to us now, and you are below 30, can I hear you shouting that prayer? Can you shout it loud? Shout it again loud and clear. Now, if you are above 30, shout it loud. Everybody together now. In the name of Jesus. Something is going on over there. In the name of Jesus, Aha. Aha. Jesus, then we pray. This strange voice that has been speaking to your head and to the head of your children is silence now. The dark shadow that comes into your bedroom to attack you is silence now. This next two prayers. Don't let anybody's voice be louder than yours. God himself told Pharaoh, let my people go. But in spite of the fact that it was the Lord saying it, the man said, no, I will not let them go. Let them stay here and suffer. Can you shout this loud and clear? Pharaoh of my father's house. Your time is up. Die in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh God of 24 hour miracle. Elijah said, by this time tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. Oh God of 24 hour miracle. Where are you? Appear. 
in the name of Jesus. Somebody needs to shout this loud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God of 24 hour miracle. Where are you? Appear. Yes. Bakapota setende keyabo shenderaba. Somebody is breaking through here this morning. Continue saying it. Continue saying it. Continue saying it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want you to double your aggression. This prayer we're praying is for ourselves, our families, our nation. There is a God that is known as God of 24 hour miracle. The 80 years of Moses being put in the cooler terminated in 24 hours. He went into that bush. One man. Within 24 hours, Moses had become another person. The blind Bartimaeus man left home that morning blind. Within 24 hours, his life had changed. Elijah said, by this time tomorrow. If you believe in that God of 24 hour miracle, God who has no respect for impossibilities, God who can release violent angels, to carry out functions. This is the time to say it loud and clear. And to let your voice be embarrassing like the voice of blind Bartimaeus. One more time. Before these angels depart from here. Oh God of 24 hour miracles. Allah. Appear. In the name of Jesus. Open that mouth, don't be afraid. Pelaku can still happen. Thank you, Jesus. But put him like a ten day aba. Appear, arise, 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 appear. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. This is not the time to sing. Just connect yourself to Jesus as I sing. You don't sing. Even if you know the song, don't sing. Just connect your heart to Jesus. And connect your faith to him who was on that cross of Calvary. Don't sing. Just concentrate, connecting your heart. Hear the footsteps of Jesus is now passing by. Here in Bam for the wounded, healing all you apply. As he spake to the sufferer who lay at the pool, he said, in this moment, will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Oh, come, we suffer. Oh, come, sin, sin, so. See the life stream is flowing. See the cleansing waves roll. Step into the calling, and I shall be whole. Will thou be made whole? 
your right hand towards this altar. Father, you are the healer. Your word says you yourself bore our infirmities and took away our sicknesses. The chastisement of our pieces upon you and by your stripes we are healed. Father, let the power in those stripes fall upon these hands that are stretched forth. In the name of Jesus, let these hands become a yoke-breaking hand. A burden removing hand. A healing touch. In the name of Jesus. If you have any challenge in any part of your body, since you have already called on the God of 24 hours, miracle, you are going to smite that place 40 times, shouting back to the sender. But the Bible says, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and an heavy lady, and I will give you rest. 40 aggressive times. Even if you have pain, don't worry. Back to the center. Let's go. Amen. Check your body now. Do what you could not do before you got here. Check that pain that you brought here. Check that lameness, paralysis, or whatever problem you brought here. Check it very well now. And once the Lord has healed you, run quickly to the altar here. Don't allow the enemy to put it back. Run quickly to the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now you are going to call on God using another name. The Bible says, The Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. God is a God of the suddenly. It is that God we want to call now. The Lord whom you seek shall suddenly up to his temple. Now God of the suddenly is about to visit somebody here. Oh God of the suddenly arise in the thunder of your power. Your voice is not loud enough. This voice is still very low. Jesus, begin to call on the God of the Southern Islam. Oh, yes. The God of the Southern
Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Something has happened to somebody over there. A problem of so many years has just vanished. For this person is still doubting. Wanting to check and check and check. Wanting to wait for long and long and long. Don't listen to the enemy. Run quickly to the altar. The problem has disappeared. It's gone. It's gone for good. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Jehovah. Can I hear you shouting that name? Make it louder than that. The story changer. Something is going on here this morning. Ba pote setila. Riba sapanda kaya bo shentera ba kopola ba kanada. Jesus. Jesus. name we pray. Shout this with violence. Miracles that will make me forget my past troubles. Can I hear the sister saying this? Say it again. Say it with assurance. Brothers, can I hear you shouting it loud? Everybody together now. Manifest in the name of Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. It must manifest. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, this is a prayer to pray with boiling anger. Every power behind my strong man. Mm-hmm. That's right. The power behind it. They are power base. Every power. Behind my strong man. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. That woman over there, I something like a ball, solid ball moving about in your womb that the enemy has planted there. 
Lay your hands on that wombi area now. Lay your hands there. Press it. It's going down. Do it well. Don't worry. Do it well. That's right. That's an angel by your side. Carrying out a surgery. Yes. It's getting smaller. Smaller. It's out now. That woman run quickly to the altar here. Don't let the devil replace anything in your womb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Aha. We are going to call upon the God of Elijah. Let's call upon you with fire and with power. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? Allah! Fight for Nigeria! In the name of Jesus, call on the God of Elijah now. My partner That's right. Yes. name we pray say thou tormenting power can you shout it loud walking against this nation in the name of Jesus deal with the tormenting powers deal with the tormenting powers Jesus name we pray. The psalmist says, let the wickedness of the wicked expire. Same way, we are going to shout this with a declaration. Let the wickedness of the wicked in this nation expire in the name of Jesus. Wickedness of the wicked. Jesus name we pray there is a sister Tinuka here I have a strange message for you I don't know who you are I don't even know where you are sitting but the Lord said I should tell you that all those powers that have gathered against you one by one you will bury them Thank you, Jesus. Aha. You are going to command something to all the past hard work you have done in your life. Say, my past labors are become testimonies in the name of Jesus. 
Open your mouth and decree that one. Become testimonies. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Pick any song of praises in your mouth. Sing it loud and clear to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. The one who is worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. your eyes and raise your two hands to the Lord. Oh yeah. Father, we thank you for today. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Continue to minister life unto us. Lay your hands upon our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's have a seat as we continue our school on Sunday. For the last two weeks, We'll be looking at the topic mental renovation. And we have looked at various aspects of mental renovation. And now last week we began to look at the different mindsets that we need to dismantle if we must be the kind of person God wants us to be. I read from Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 7. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. We have said that the meditation of a person's heart could be unacceptable to God. We have said that currently people are renovating so many things, renovating their diet, renovating their bodies, Innovating so many things, but they are leaving their mind unrenovated. And that we need to change our thinking and change our mindset. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 how we can do that. Romans chapter 12, I read verse 2. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What will transform you is the renovation of your mind, the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 2 again, and be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Notice that place. Then begin to renew your mind. And that renewal will transform your life. And it's a very serious matter. We are mounting at our gates now and at various entry points here. The kind of Dressing we don't want here. So nobody is, will make any mistake. But I, don't, I didn't know we, I should not come here like this. Once your dressing is part of those by our gate, uh, you will know that you are breaking our law. And the ushers are going to enforce it, especially for those who repeat the offenses. So those who can offer rappers will offer rappers. If you can't offer it, you go. But there must be a difference between people going to the house of God to worship and those going to a party. Fortunately, there are so many places of worship who are ready to accept any dress, so that's an option. But we won't allow worldly dressing, worldly appearance here. So for the sake of clarity, those things will be are displayed at the gates. And before service, they will start showing them on the screen, we don't want this, we don't want that. We are here, a group of people who want to make heaven. We're here to bring in revival. 
a revivalist does not get conformed to the world. And it's a terrible tragedy when we begin to do things that makes the church to lose its power. And it's very sad. Praise the Lord. Be ye transformed. Do not conform. And we began to look at various mindset, mentality that we need to change. The victim mentality. You think that something is after you. You think that everybody is pursuing you. You think that everyone is your enemy. You feel that everyone is a witch or wizard. A victim mentality. Parasite mentality. You think you cannot succeed unless somebody helps you. Grasshopper mentality. That you feel inferior as if you can't do much. Survivor mentality. Just want to survive, you don't want to do anything more. Those are mindsets that we need to break down and transform by the power of God. There is pessimistic mentality. This person is not hopeful at all. Always saying things negative, 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 negative. It is the kind of mindset we should change. And last week we were talking about the serpent mentality. That is the heart of anger. And last week I explained to you thoroughly that that mindset is a terrible mindset. The anger is a fruitful mother of many unhappy children. And that a man or a woman is as big as what makes you angry. And every moment you are angry, you lose a minute of happiness. And like I told you last week, anger is actually self-cannibalism. You are killing yourself. Mentally, health-wise, medically, it does a lot of terrible things to you. I read this somewhere. Let me read it to you. It said, down in anger, medically, this is what happens, which is hazardous to your health. One, said, respiration deepens. Two, the heart beats more rapidly. Three, the pressure of your artery rises. Four, blood begins to shift from stomach and intestine to the heart. Five, blood begins to shift to the central nervous system and the muscles. This is medically what happens. Six, digestive processes cease. Seven, sugar is freed from the reserves in the liver. Eight, your spleen begins to contract and discharges its content of consecrated material into the body. And one, then adrenaline is secreted into your blood. This is a very serious matter. And it's a mindset we should destroy. The only time you should get angry is to get angry with sin, get angry with the enemy. Only anger is the anger the Bible recommends. Many years back, a dangerous man was brought to court. Brought to court. And he was supposed to stand in judgment that day. But this criminal came wearing a funny hat. And the judge was a very angry man. He gets angry very quickly. So when he saw the man with the hat, he said, who is this man wearing a hat in my court? He said, take away the hat now. The man did not take away the hat. So the judge was angry. He said, get out of this court. Walk out now. Walk out away from here. And the man with the hat promptly stood up and walked away. Then the case, the case came. They called the case of the man. And the judge said, where is the accused? They say, your honor, that is the man you ordered out of the courtroom. So ask him to go. He's gone. Anger makes us play into the hands of our enemies. I'm praying for anyone here. If that spirit is still in you, may the God of signs and wonders pour the blood of Jesus into your heart to evacuate it in the name of Jesus. Let your amen be loud and clear. This is mentality we should completely change. There is the acidic heart, acidic mindset. That kind of mindset is the answer that hates people. The mindset of hatred. Hatred is a terrible thing. 
The Bible says, if you hate your brethren without a cause, you are a murderer. So, hatred is murder. Hatred is like burning the house to kill the rat. Hatred is self-punishment. Those of you who have gone to the school of deliverance, they will tell you that hatred is the handcuff of demons. We should not hate people. We could hate the spirit that is in them, that is making them do evil. But we should not hate people. Hatred is murder. Hatred is a terrible thing. And we should not hate anyone. The Bible says, if your enemy is hungry, give him food. If your enemy is thirsty, give him water. So by so doing, you put all coals of fire on his head. And nobody carries all coals of fire on the head and is comfortable. Hatred hits you harder than the one you aim it at. One funny thing about Christianity is this. Two people who hate each other say they are Christians. It's not possible. Two people can't hate each other and they both claim to love God. It's not possible. It's hatred against human beings that makes some people do all kinds of terrible things. God called Gideon. And he told Gideon, before I can bless you, you need to go and destroy the idols of your father's house. So Gideon destroyed those idols. In the morning, when they found the idols were destroyed, the idol worshippers were angry. Bring out this Gideon. He must be the one who destroyed the idols. It became a big row. Then the father of Gideon came out. I said, ha, if this Baal you are worshipping is powerful, why are you fighting for him? Let him fight his own battle. Somebody has gone to break his shrine. So let, let, let him destroy the person who broke his shrine. Why, why are you fighting for him? And that dissolved the battle. And the same thing is relevant these days. We see people fighting for the God they say they serve. Instead of allowing that God, you say they have insulted to fight the battle. If it's a true God, he will fight his battle. So really, it's not God they fight for. It's hatred. Hatred. Hatred is a cancer of intelligence. Once somebody has hatred in his mind, intelligence will flee away. It's a mentality we should change. Mentality we should change. Then there is a blind heart blind heart. They fail to see what God wants them to see. They can't see anything. They just come to church. Immediately we share the grace now. We find many people just roaming back home. No group. No house fellowship. No nothing. They are the blind hearts. No group. No house fellowship. No contribution. Nothing. In the house of your father, then you are a blind heart. And the time will come when we all get to heaven. The greeting is, well done. Well done. God does not expect people to come to the house of God and just warm the benches. God does not expect you to come to church and become a prayer contractor. This is why the mountain of fire teaches independence. To be able to stand by yourself. There are people who come to the services. They can sing better than the ones they are hearing. They can play instruments better than the one they are hearing. Yet, after the grace, they stray away. Those are the blind hearts. And I want you to repent from that. You have to change your mindset. You say, I don't want to get involved because in my former church, they showed me pepper. That was your former church. And let me be honest with you. There is no one who wants to serve God and there will be no opposition. Anybody who truly wants to serve the Lord, immediately you stand up and begin to serve the true God, there will be opposition. If you are not opposed, then it is not God that you are not serving God. It's, it's not him you are working for. I want you to understand this very, very, very well. This is a very, very serious matter. And I want you to know this very, very well. When the mountain of fire and miracles ministry started in those days, plenty of Christian leaders who were criticizing the mountain of fire are praying the prayers now. I'm even reading posters of what they are saying. And the posters are what we say here. 
I pray that you will not be a blind heart. And those of you just come here, and you have made yourself association of floaters. Just float. Float in the house of your father. You are not doing anything. When you get to heaven, the greeting is well done. Well done means you have done something. You can't come to the house of God doing nothing. This is why I've been bringing groups here to tell you, this is what we do, this is what we do. Don't just come here, join us, do this, do this, do that. Praise the name of the Lord. There is the crab heart. The crab heart. They are easily fearful. Any small thing they are afraid. Whereas the Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God and believe in me also. Let not your heart be troubled. Fear is of the devil. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power of love and of a sound mind. There is a crab heart. Then there is a dog heart. Dog heart. This is very, very common among men and a few women. The dog heart is a lusting heart. Always lusting after the opposite sex. Always lusting after sex. Always lusting after inordinate affection. Anytime you see the opposite sex, your heart is gone. If you don't stop that kind of mentality, it will stop you one day. There are some women too like that too. The dog heart. Anything goes. At any small provocation, they pull up their skirts. These are dog hearts. It's a mentality, a mindset that you need to deal with. We always preach at singles meetings. When people come and say, eh, excuse me, I didn't want the man to run away. And uh, so if the man asks for sex, I'll give him sex because I didn't want him to run away. Many of them discover that sex does not hold down the man. Anyone who is still excited and aroused when you are looking at naked, naked pictures of women, you have a dog heart. You are still practicing masturbation, you have a dog heart. You are still having sex outside marriage, you have a dog heart. You are practicing adultery, you have a dog heart. You come here bringing a different wife, whereas your proper wife is somewhere else, you have a dog heart. You are here to even search for women, you have a dog heart. The dog heart has captured even our youth. And many of them are completely lost. Completely lost. This is a very serious matter. And I want you to understand it. Lost. And that spirit has pushed a lot of young men into serious trouble. That is only by divine intervention they can be free. A boy from a very good home living at Lekki went to a party in his parents' car. He met a girl there. He had never met this girl before. He became friendly with the girl. Somebody you've never seen before. And straight away, that one agreed to follow him to a hotel. So they got into the car. She sat by his side and they drove off. They were driving at, on the third mainland bridge. As the boy was driving, this strange girl that he had picked up from the party was on loose was on losing his trousers on the steering wheel. So he was on losing his trousers on the steering wheel. And as he was doing that, the man was driving and getting excited. Then this strange girl began to kiss his male organ right in the car. And then after some time, he said, Pack, pack, pack. I want to speak. So they parked the car by Todd Mill The girl got out of the car. Instead of spitting into the lagoon, she jumped inside and disappeared. Then for the first time, the boy knew he was in trouble. That whoever he picked up from that party was not a member of the human race. He had come from somewhere else. And from that day, his problem started. Of course, when problems are that start, they jump out of their dancing churches and start looking for mountain of fire. But all because there was a dark spirit in place. And that is still struggling with that now. I'm praying for anyone here that any strange, cleverly concealed force that has cleverly kept in bondage and you are pretending to be free, receive your deliverance this morning in the name of Jesus. Let your amen roar like thunder. 
Which act did I talk about just now? Which act? Say it again. Say it again. Turn to the person and say, I hope you don't have a dog hat. Turn to another person and say the same thing. This is a very serious problem. And I want you to understand it very, very well. Something that climbs over a person. You don't care where the person is coming from. You don't care whether the person is HIV positive or negative. You don't care whether it's your sister or it's your in-law. You don't care anything. At that mad moment, you are no longer in charge. But something is wrong with you. And you need to correct it. If not, it will stop you where it stopped your fathers. Another heart is the double tongue heart. Double tongue heart. A believer telling lies. Lies. Christians tell lies. In the olden days, banks used to come to church to look for workers. Because they know the Christians will not steal. But now, many of them are doing things they should not do. Telling lies. Stealing things is an evil heart. We need a renovation. Renovation. There is evil advertisement heart. Evil advertisement. The enemy is always using you to pronounce advertise evil. You advertise evil. You are the one who will do ungodly dressing. You are the one who will post for cameras naked. You are the one who expose your body for others to see. Your heart is a heart that advertises evil. Your heart does not bring people to holiness. But it brings people to destruction. It moves people closer to hellfire than to heaven. It's an evil heart. Then there is a fox heart. The fox heart is a heart that is so money conscious and money focused. Money, 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 money. Everything is money, 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 money. And once it is not money, they are not interested. And if you ask them to do anything that is no monetary gain, they are not interested. They can't do anything free for anyone. Money, money, money. They are so money-minded, they are even stingy towards God. Stingy towards God. And if God moves you into wealth, and you are stingy to him, you are playing with that wealth. Because he is the one who will protect the wealth for you. Many people don't understand the principle. The thing is when you hold, hold money, hold money, you hold it, you hold it. You're stingy with it. Is there to multiply? No, no, no. It's not like that. You should stop from being a fox heart. Then there is a maggot heart. The maggot heart is the heart that prefers the company of sinners to the company of the children of God. It prefers to stay with sinners. He enjoys being with sinners than being with the children of God. It's a maggot heart. I pray for anyone here with that kind of heart that the Lord will minister and touch you in the name of Jesus. That is a proud heart. The heart of the peacock. Proud and cocky. Very proud. Rating himself above what he or she should be. Rating herself above where God has put her. It's a peacock heart. A proud and cocky heart. We should deal with it. There is a heart of the pig. Difficulty in fasting. For our strangers, they don't fast. Normal fasting, there is a problem. Early in the morning, coming to church, they are the ones that are making food sellers who multiply around us. Just your mouth is the ready market. Coming to church, you will buy puff puff, buns. You are not even hungry yet. We are buying this in advance. If we say that us has open all bags now, here. Yeah. You find biscuits, puff puff, akara. Some people are bought on the way. On the way. It is a pig heart. Difficulty in fast. Difficulty in controlling your tummy. Difficulty in waiting upon the Lord. Hating fasting with perfect hatred. When we say, ah, 70 days is coming, 
the heart is already shaking. Say, hey, we are starting again. It's the heart of a pig. Let us call it the right name. There is no point in polishing it. It is the heart of a pig. And Jesus said, this kind goeth not forth, except by fasting and prayer. And certain problems will not shift except by fasting and prayer. I'm looking forward and I'm praying to one day when this Wednesday meeting, I say you should break after the service, becomes a three days dry affair. This Monday, no food. Tuesday, no food. Then you break after Wednesday service. I'm looking forward. Because even the Wednesday, Wednesday one, some people are judging it. It's the, the correct name. It should be called the correct name. Our generation is the most lamentable Christian generation that has happened. We lack the ancient power because we do not practice the ancient things. If we want that ancient power back, we must practice the ancient things that they practice. We must do what they are doing. Our forefathers do not do marriage for men and men in church and women and women in church. Our forefathers don't do it. This is where the power is dropping. Dropping. Our forefathers don't come to church dressing naked. They don't. But we are doing it. Power is dropping. We have more display, more entertainment, more things that people will be clapping at in church. But less power, less decree power is affecting us. Praise the Lord. We have the poison heart. Poison heart. Always abusing others. Talking rough to people. Saying terrible things to people. The mouth is very acidic and bad. These are worldly heart. That is the snail heart. Snail heart. Everything sluggish. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want to take my time. I'll take my time. Read the Bible through. Uh, I will do it another time. The spirit of procrastination. Do personal vigil. I'm always tired. When I get home, so I will do it next time. Everything is next time, next time, tomorrow, tomorrow, next time, next time, tomorrow. And such people, they don't like long and fervent prayers. They don't like it. They are allergic to long prayers. These are hearts that we need to change. There is spiritual illiterate heart. Spiritually illiterate. They have turned the Bible to an ordinary story book. That is when they even bother to read it. They don't read it at all. They don't read it at all. There is a sese fly heart. Those who sleep in the place of prayer. They even come to church and sleep. Sese fly, sleeping sickness heart. These are, there are people like that. And it's a heart we need to deal with. This is why we're talking about mental innovation. There is a vagabond heart. Vagabond heart. Such hearts, they hate hearing messages about sin. They hate hearing messages about second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They hate messages on righteousness. They hate messages on consecration. They just want breakthrough, prosperity, blessing. But they don't want to know that he's given unto man to die only once. And after that, judgment. And that, that judgment will meet you the way you die. There is no adjustment once you die. Finish. Nothing again. Once that judgment stands. This is a very serious matter. And this our generation. We have no excuse now. Even if you refuse to read your Bible, there are at least four or five people now who rose from the dead and who are telling people what they saw, which is in line with what the Bible is saying. It's saying. There is even a small boy in America now that went for surgery. It was at the point of death when they did surgery for him. When the boy came out of the anesthesia, what he said is all that he met Jesus. What Jesus told him, everything, that book has become so popular now. With a small boy talking into details. 
Did that boy must be around seven or six, I've forgotten the age. Talking what Jesus said. And when I read what the boy saw, and compared to what some people who rose from the dead also saw they saw. Same thing. The same thing they are saying. So the vagabond hearts, that like the hearts who ate messages that will make them change their lifestyle. We met a man who stopped coming here. And we said, ah, daddy, ah, you used to come to Mountain of Fire. Why are you not coming again? I said, ah, sorry. I don't want to come here anymore. Each time I come, they make me feel guilty. They're always talking about second wife, third wife, polygamy. I said, but he does not, he, he does not think he can stay with one woman. He wants to experiment. I said, but, but in his new church now, where he's going to? But he's been there for two years. And nobody has ever talked about fornication, adultery, nobody is complaining. So, so in that place, he said he's at peace. Those are the vagabond heart. God is calling all of us to repentance. Repentance is really a change of mind. That change of mind also means change of life. Because what is not in your thinking cannot be in your living. So this is why a mindset is a major setback for human beings. What is rooted in your mind determines what can be released out of your mind. We need mind renovation. A mental renovation. How do we renovate our mind? How do we renovate our spirit? How do we go into mental renovation? Number one is complete repentance. Complete repentance. Repentance is I'm going this way, I'm no longer going this way. I'll change my life. That's what repentance means. The thing is this. If you refuse to repent and you are living an active sin, please listen to me well. Lord. And a tragedy, a disaster is supposed to happen. But you are living in a sin, in sin. God is under no obligation to rescue you. That's the truth. They came and told Jesus, this, that, 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 that. Jesus said, ah. See, those people who were walking on the street and a tower fell on them and they died. Do you think they are worse sinners? He said, except you repent. You shall perish likewise. That's what Jesus said. But once a precious child of God is there. Because of that one person, the Lord will wave the evil. So, by complete repentance, that's the first thing. Two, by the word of God, the word of God, victory is not for lazy people. When your inside changes, your outside will change. So, by the word of God, Make the Bible your companion. Don't let a day go by without you studying the word of God. Memorize the Bible. Meditate on the Bible. Good enough, there are so many good books out that will tell you, read this on Monday, read this on Tuesday, read this on Wednesday. They sort of make you read the Bible throughout the year. So please, beloved, what is the first thing if you want to renovate your mental life? Can you shout it loud? complete repentance. Number two is what? By the word of God. Many don't like Bible studies. Many hate anywhere where they are doing consistent study of the word of God. There are many here who have never attended the Monday Bible study. There are many here who have never even attended Sunday school because they will technically and cleverly avoid coming at time. If something in you hates Bible study. If something in you hates reading the Bible, it is an enemy. And you must deal with it. You must deal with it. We must memorize it, meditate it. It must be only in our mouth. You must have your memory verses in your brain. You must have enough consciousness by soaking yourself into the word of God to be able to quote the Bible in your dream, quote the Bible in your vision, quote the Bible anywhere you find yourself. You must have that within you. Three, change your utterances. Change your utterances. If you are a negative kind of person, 
They're always talking negative things, negative things. Change your vocabulary. Change your utterances. And make sure that you speak things that is in line with the word of God. Four, banish fear from your life. Banish fear from your life. Fear is a tragedy. Fear is a disaster. Fear is a tragedy. Fear is a disaster. Sometimes when people are inside the vehicles, they are inside the plane, and there is a violent shaking or anything like that, it is when those violent shaking start, or you see the vehicle moving in a strange way, that you will know there are plenty of Christians there. Because all of them, all of a sudden, you know the shaking starts and the vehicle is moving zigzag. And all kinds of speaking in tongues. Black, 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 and you are drinking the wine they are serving. I know you are speaking in tongues. But the Lord deliver us from fear. What is the first thing? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five is associate yourself with the right people. Associate yourself with the right people. The Bible says if you move with the wise, you'll be wise. If you move with the foolish, you'll be foolish. Move with the wise, you become wise. Move with the foolish, you become foolish. You can't score A in mathematics when the closest person to you is calling F. Your closest friend, which you teach you, is calling F. It's not possible. You look for somebody who is better. Six, change your attitude. Change your attitude. Make up your mind. I will change my attitude. I will not become a number in church. I will become a member. You are either a number or a member. Then, make up your mind too. I, I will not just become a member. I will become a disciple. A disciple. Disciples are those who stay after service. They go to their group meeting. They pray. Numbers will carry their Bibles and go. The disciples will go to the house fellowships. Numbers will just drink or sleep. Disciples will get here 5 30, 6 a.m. to pray. Numbers will not come on time, but to get somebody to reserve seat for them and be fighting people who come early and deserve fighting. Disciples will practice holiness within and without. It's the numbers who wear dangerous skirts, dangerous shirts, dangerous chain, dangerous everything. And this is a very serious matter. I was even reading in the papers yesterday. I don't know whether it is true. I read it that Lagos State Government is giving regulation in civil service that don't come there with mini skirt again. I don't know whether it is true. That people ought to dress properly to work. So if they are already saying that one, then the Church of God has to be even stricter. There must be a change of attitude. These disciples who will come and start cleaning the benches, but the numbers will be complaining. They are broken this one. This one is dirty. That one is dirty. But you say it's dirty. They are broken it. What have you done? What have, you, what have you personally done to say that it's okay? There must be a complete change of attitude. If we want a revival, unfortunately, and I'm saying this with all sadness, this, our generation, is floating away without seeing a single revival. Not one. The last revival in Nigeria was in 1930s. Since then, this generation has seen nothing. Simply because we are not anchored into holy attitudes and the eyes are outside. Outside. Not all that glitters is gold. There's a young people who come to church here. They come with their parents. But they just look around. Say, this place, old fashioned. This place, they go to where they think is new fashioned. Because right now, the parents are the ones fending for them. The parents are battling for them now. A time will come when they now begin to confront life's battle by themselves. They are still going to run away from those places back to the altar of prayer. Many years back, there were some churches like that have started. And young people took them, plenty of them. There are thousands of them in church. They dress the way they like. But they know the Bible. 
they taught scriptures. But they didn't teach them that basically you are a black man. They didn't teach them that basically all the Americans you are trying to copy, great grandfather, pastor, grandfather, pastor, father, pastor, and he now is a pastor. They didn't teach them that those the generational line is different. But the man who is whistling in church and jumping up, his father is a masquerade in the east. They didn't teach them how to deal with that. Those were those days, many years ago. If you go to prayer city, we can deliverance now. Those people who were young then, majority of them will find they're seeking for deliverance now. Because people like us complain that time that you are not teaching these young people the right things. You are not teaching them prayer. You are not teaching them warfare. You are teaching them prosperity. You are not teaching them what happens if the enemy comes to attack that prosperity. We need a complete change of attitude. If we, as the mountain of fire, must bring in a revival, we need a team of disciples, not just numbers. The people who turned the world upside down, they were just 120. They vomited fire. And as part of the fire we're enjoying now, I pray that all the hidden prophets who are here, hidden prophetesses who are here, the ones who are here, and God has been telling them, you are not pulling your weights. You are not doing what I want you to do. May heaven visit you. So that you can be alive to your spiritual responsibilities. And last but not the least, be a prayer warrior. A prayer warrior. The Bible says men ought always to pray and not faint. We should pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Once you understand the chemistry and power of prayer, you'll be able to mentally renovate your life. There will be mental renovation. Glory be to the name of Jesus. Later, we're going into what you call mental blockage. Because a lot of people are being changed mentally. Rise to your feet now. Rise to your feet. Change my heart, oh, oh. make it right new. Change my heart, oh. Say this loud and clear. Every destructive mindset depart from my life. In the name of Jesus, open your mind and begin to deal with it. Every destructive mindset depart from my life. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. There are two young men here who are still struggling. Unfortunately, right now, their having relationship with women almost double their ages. Almost the age of their mothers. You are here. The two of you. I have a word to you from the Lord. The Lord wants to rescue you from this destructive relationship you have put yourself. Immediately we close the service. Come to the back here and report yourself to the ushers. Because the next sex you have with those women will signal your end. Two young men. President is sleeping with two men who are almost double the age of your mother. You need to get yourself out of this cage you have put yourself in. Father, we thank you for this morning. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, every idol in our heart, break them now. Break them now. Break them now. Break them now. In the name of Jesus. All the prayer requests are, oh Lord, answer them by fire. I bless in the name of the Lord. The Lord blesses you from Zion. And make his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Next Wednesday, come fast into the prayer meeting and come with the water you are going to drink here to break your fast. And it's the final meeting of the Water of Power series. 
Let us share the grace in fellowship. Thank you for watching. God bless you.